I wanted to talk a little bit about Miramichi and the experiences that we've had with it here at Broken Sound and what it has done for our soils and the golf course and, and helping the environment. Uh, it goes back to, we were getting ready to do the renovation uh, four years ago at the old course, which is the course that holds the tournament. And we were basically doing a no-till regressing. Um, went in, killed, we had TIFF sport, 37 different varieties of mutations with it. I uh, killed all the mutations out. My committee in the old course decided to keep the greens. So it gave us a really broad spectrum of what we could do and test with Miramichi. Because like most of us as superintendents uh, out there, when somebody says, I'm gonna bring you some type of a, a biochar or a carbon or a product, the first thing we, we think of is how we use it to neutralize bad situations. So I was skeptical in the beginning uh, Russ Britton had come and talked to me a lot about the, the testing that they had done with North Carolina State, um, some of the areas, the equestrian areas that they've worked with, but they had never tested it or done anything on the golf courses with it. So we went through during the renovation, we picked some test, test areas. Uh, our first test area we used is we stripped 40 feet around all of the lakes. Uh, because I figured the first thing to do is put it to the test in the hardest area that we could actually use it and hold the nutrients in the soil without letting them get into the, the lakes or the watersheds. It was last year from our first testing that I was sitting with Steve Wright from Pine Tree and Bland Cooper, who's my PGA Tour agronomist from our stop. And I felt kind of dumb and still feel kind of dumb telling this story that I then realized when Steve Wright asked me how I kept my lakes so clean that we applied our carbon at 30 pounds per thousand, sod it over top of it, and it was the last time that I ever treated my lakes for green algae. In South Florida, that's a, a monthly, if not bi-monthly treatment down here in treating algae and lakes. Our average water temperature is around 90 degrees. Our average lake depth is around four feet. So that's one of the biggest uh, areas that we first saw the huge impact from Miramichi. So not only did it save me from having to treat my lakes every month, which now has saved me two grand a month uh, at the old course or where I have, where Lake Worth Drainage Distance does not actually treat our lakes um, as a huge money saver, but on the environmental impact side of holding the nutrients in the soil long enough for the plant to use it as to letting it go into the watershed and, and being used as nitrogen explosion on allergies down here in South Florida. So once we saw the impact of what it did on our lake banks, we expanded our horizons. We went out and treated the entire golf course at testing our rates at 20 pounds per thousand to see if we could continue that same impact and, and how much it would impact the golf course. We're on a, a pure sand ridge or a sand dune uh, at the old course and same thing close to it at the new course, a little bit heavier soils. So in using what we were, were doing with holding the nutrients in the soils longer and stopping it from going down into the watershed, uh, we've seen a huge reduction on the amount of fertilizer that we've had to use. And our disease pressure has gone almost non-existent. And once I get farther into how we built the new course with and how it impacted that, you'll see the stories here from how we tested at the old course and, and used it to build the new course. So we kept seeing reductions. Fairy ring was a big issue for us. Uh, we treated it one time this year uh, and it was more of a preventative where we saw a little bit coming where before we were spraying three, four, five, six apps a year on our fairy ring problems down here. Um, which took us into the next level of last summer where we took it and we put it through a dry check system. So we had dry check come out. We went with a 95, 95% 95 sand, 5% micronized carbon and we injected it into the greens. We did a test green with uh, James Sprinkle down here, and we put it on a straight sand California base green where we were testing some varieties of turf for greens. We did one pass with just air, one pass with straight sand, and then the third pass was the 95.5. We turned the water off last May when we were in the middle of a drought, and the only green strip on the entire green and stayed there with 80% better, better color and 80% better moisture and nutrient retention that we actually tested it in the soil sample. We went 12 days with zero irrigation 
looked black and white. But it literally was dark green with, with very mild drought pressure on it and held its color. The cell tensile strength was, was almost 80% better than the areas that weren't treated. So about three weeks ago during the tour event, I had Bland Cooper here and he said, there's a funny strip on the left side of number three green. He said, I can only see it uh, when, it's, when the clouds are over, but he said, it's a definitely a strip. It's all the way across the green. It had to be some type of uh, an application error. So we went and looked, we pulled soil samples on the area that had a light, lighter color. It, was, it looked like lack of nutrients or less nutrients in the soil or the availability of, of the nutrients in the soil. So we went through, we pulled two soil samples. We, we went in and we took some pictures and then come to find out after the testing and the nutrient holding capability through the tissue analysis is that it was a clogged injector during the dry jet that we did uh, during our dry jet application. So once again, it went back to show the actual nutrient holding capabilities and moisture holding capabilities, especially when we had the tour here, because basically they turned the water off. We, we, we turned the water off. We pushed the golf course as much as we can. And so that was another pass on the greens, just with the greens dry jacked information that we used that you could see. And, and the testing was in the soil test analysis. The testing was in the tissue test analysis. And visually, you could see it a mile away. So we took all the information and, and how we grew the golf course in at the old course when I had a chance to start doing the planning for the renovation at the new course, which is called the new course. It's not, not just the new course. It's called the new course. And my thought process was I wanted to go in and literally build a 20 inch carbon profile, no different than any carbon profile you or, or carbon filtration system you would put on your water or your house or in your air conditioner for your kids. I wanted to do the same thing on the entire golf course. So, so what we did is we went in at 40 pounds per thousand on the golf course. Uh, after we had it, after we had the rough shaping in and we put in, put down the, the Miramichi and we actually brought in a big bow mag and tilled it 18 to 20 inches deep in the entire property, hundred acres of everything that we touched. And then we went in and to build our greens mix, we came in and, and put in to get the infiltration rates where we wanted them, which was 15 inches per hour, uh, built a greens mix that we could put in to do the same thing that we did on the rest of the golf course. So we built this entire golf course based on a, a carbon filtration system and nutrient holding capability and water reduction. And so far what we're seeing is we're gonna save probably in South Florida down here where I run a lot more water than you're gonna run up there. We're looking at saving 35 to 40 million gallons a year. We reduced our heads on the golf course by 120 uh, irrigation heads. And we opened two and a half months early. So obviously my membership was extremely happy. We used 25% less fertilizer than I used at the old course for 80 acres on the growing. And we opened it, we opened the old course two weeks early. We opened the new course two, two months early. So the, the only differences that we've done on both golf courses was the amount of Miramichi that we actually used on both of the growings and when the application rate was because when we were testing it at the old course, I didn't know what I didn't know. So now that I knew what I knew for the new course, it saved my membership a ton of money. We opened the golf course early and it is, is unbelievable product. I just had, I've had probably 15 to 20 different people come and look at the greens mix. Uh, we, we tested the roots three days ago. I had, um, Via Meisner was here looking at a new irrigation system. They asked what we did for our greens mix. We went out and showed them. I pulled a cup. The greens are 137 days old and the roots, roots were breaking out of the bottom of the cup when we pulled the cup. So, so when you look at the benefits of using Miramichi to uh, even, even a lot of the other biochars, I've had a lot of people come up and ask me, you know, what are the differences? Um, why do you believe in Miramichi so much? You know, what are the differences that would impact us at our golf course? It's the way that it's made, it's the way that it's handled, it's the way that it's blended, and, and the ability for them to be able to adjust, you know, infiltration weights alone was, was unbelievable. I worked with uh, them working with Seminole uh, Hope over at Tifton Labs. She called me and she said, Shannon, they want, a, they want an eight inch perk rate. 
she said, There's, I've never been able to do it. I've never seen a product that was capable of doing it. Uh, what do you suggest us do with the rates on the Miramichi? So we tested an 80-20, uh, an 85-15, a 90-10, which I'd already known. That's what mine was. So I knew that was around 15 inches an hour. And we started playing with particle sizes. So we went in, she did all the testing. She called me back. She said that she had to, she was sorry that she had to apologize for me, that she got a perk rate with the micronized carbon or the finest particles that we use. We got the perk rate down to 8.4 inches per hour. So the differences in using Miramichi and a lot of the other biochars is that the particle size and distribution is so consistent that we can actually adjust an infiltration rate on your greens mix by half an inch per hour. That's hard to do with, you know, I've had profile greens, I've had USGA spec greens, I've used um, multiple types of peat when I built greens. None have had the ability or the consistency to be able to go in and adjust a perk rate on a greens profile by half an inch per hour. So, so that's, that in itself is a testament to the abilities of what Miramichi has the capability of doing. So, with that ability, I started talking to up in Charlotte, uh, TPC. We were started playing with some rates there and, and a lot of people want to come in and use half peat and half carbon. Uh, a lot of time, the first reason I ask is, is why would you want to, to mix the two or get the consistency? You have one that's gonna break down a lot quicker and then you're gonna have an inconsistency in there where it breaks down and settles into the layers of your profile, especially on your greens. I have a, a, a person that's on the other coast that came over about a month ago and was wanting to do the same thing. So I asked him, I said, you know, this just, I understand the, the skepticism of, of being able to jump out there and making huge decisions for our membership and, and for our clubs. Luckily for me, uh, my club is very environmentally friendly, sensitive. They allow me to do things that a lot of other clubs would not do. But with being able to do that and being at the front or the fourth step of being able to do this, I, I am able to pose the questions of why, when you see it working, how or why would you want to change it or still go to the comfortability of peat or something that's going to break down? I can tell you that I've met with Todd uh, at the USGA many times. I know that they say, you know, peat or heavy other organics do not create fairing. I've had two test screens and now for, for five years, in South Florida have not had to make a single fairing application. Um, I have taken spots of fairing on the, the older greens, which are 18 years old now, uh, Tiffigal greens. They're in great shape. Uh, we've incorporated as much Miramichi into them as we can. We've had extreme less, as I said before, fairing outbreaks. But just so I could see that if it, if it would move or stay in the soil, I took a fairing plug and we took and put it in one of the test greens to see if the fairing would actually move in the green. The fairing did not move in the green and it got better. Hmm. I have not tested the soils to see exactly how different yet. We just did this a couple weeks ago, actually a couple months ago. Now we've just been too busy with the tournament um, to see what the actual difference in substances were. The only common thing is that there was more carbon around the plug to hold more moisture and nutrients there that when, this, when the roots started going laterally, that they were able to use the nutrients there to better protect themselves. So with what we're doing with the Miramichi and testing it and what we're using it for and the people that are coming to see what it's doing has been, it's been unbelievable. I mean, it's just really incredible the people that are coming. Um, I'm going to speak to the Club Managers Association the first week uh, in San Francisco. Uh, there's 7,000 general managers that are coming in there, or 7,000. 7, and, you know, basically wanting to know how we can do what we're doing. You know, if we can do it here, then why can't we do it everywhere? Yeah, and I normally start my talks off by saying, what's the difference in, in you know, the desert and, or, you know, if you think about the ocean, um, you see that there's, you know, the sand, it never has any weeds between the sea oats and the water. I'm um, a desert, doesn't have any plant grow, growing in it other than cacti. Well, when you look at everything that we do, everything we do takes carbon out of the soil. Everything we use, everything we grow constantly takes carbon out of the soil. Nobody ever thinks about putting carbon back in, monitoring carbon levels or measuring carbon levels. 
Um, we're actually going to start measuring some of the carbon levels just to see where the peak performance is so that we know where the maintain the maintenance part of it is. If you build a new golf course and use carbon, what is the maintenance level of carbon to keep it the, the correct ratios of carbon nitrogen in your soils? Uh, the correct amount of pore space in your soils. Obviously, it's a lot different from clay soils and pore space and what I have down in South Florida and the way nutrients would move quicker through my pure sand soil than they were up there. So each soil profiles that we look at and we manage is completely different. So if you sent me your soil samples and you're, you're in Illinois or an area that has higher silt and, and clay areas, you're not going to need as much carbon as I need down in a pure sand area. I mean, you look at the desert or, or by the ocean, there's zero carbon in those soils. An oasis in the middle of the desert, how does all that carbon get in the soil? And normally it's an asteroid that breaks down, hits in the desert lands, breaks apart, and carbon gets infiltrated back into the soil. You look at the deserts out in Texas, you go back 100, 200 million years ago, it had carbon in it. those were rainforests. They're deserts now because the carbon is no longer in the soil, can't hold any moisture, can't hold any nutrients. And for there on, once it cannot sustain life, it is gone. So we're just getting started, started and seeing what we can do with the huge impacts uh, of carbon on the golf courses and, and what our maintenance levels are. Uh, my, my program right now that I'm using is uh, we went out and put 40 pounds per thousand on the new course. We're up to about 30 pounds per thousand at the old course. Uh, I use the 901C as a part fertility, part carbon source to put back in the soil as a maintenance level. Um, the greens at the new course are 100% are 9010 Miramichi carbon. I could not be happier with them and, and continuing to educate people on, on how to continue building a profile that will increase your asset by breaking down a lot slower, holding more nutrients, more water. You know, we're looking at trying to build a 20 year profile. I don't want to come back in 10 years and tell my greens committee, well, I use P, so we're recommended every 10 years to rebuild the greens. I want to come back in 10 years and say everything that we did and plan for uh, and using the Miramichi carbon and, and what we're doing and planning for the future and environmental impact is I took your, your $600,000 investment that we were going to have to redo in 10 years and we just we, we took your $600,000 investment and we, we turned it into a 20 year asset. I just saved them $600,000 and three months of the golf that the first thing they say when we want to do a renovation is that's, right. three, that's three months I'll never get back in my life and I'm 88 years old. So everything that we're looking at doing and using as, a, as an asset on the golf course and even talking to government and, and using them to extend the useful life of an asset instead of 10 years and taking it to 20 years. If you do that just on greens and then we do the same thing on the golf course, you have a write off of an asset that's 120 acres instead of 10 years, you get to write off. So when we're looking at the uses of carbon, it's not just something that we're doing to use in the pro profile to make it better, more environmentally friendly, saves us on disease pressure, saves us on water, does 100% right by the environment and us making decisions based on our memberships, we take and tell them instead of, instead of them spending 1.2 million on greens for the next 20 years, it only costs them $600,000. And renovating the golf course, it just cost them $4 million that we can elongate that for another five or seven years. So it saves them another 2.3 or $2.4 million. We've done our job full circle for the environment. What we believe is right, making our golf courses as good as we can and saving our membership millions of dollars over a 10 or 15 year term on, on what they can and then saving them six to eight months to, depending on the scope of work that you would do in their golf life, which is, I mean, they measure their life in golf. You know, first thing when I go to my greens committee meetings, or if we're going to close a golf course down for the renovation, where do I play golf and how much of an inconvenience is it? Because I'm 88 years old and I really don't want to drive anywhere else to play golf. So we open that window, shorten that window, we shorten the window by two months, save them millions of dollars and do right by the environment. It's kind of hard to not take the leap of faith and go forward with what is correct to do in, in our jobs as providing a, a, a playable surface for our membership, keeping them safe, keeping them around, less fungicides and chemicals, reducing fertility, reducing water, 
it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, you know, when I talk to people about Miramichi, I just did a talk uh, over in, in Sentosa in Singapore, basically like we're doing this one and talking with them and getting the product over there. I just had uh, two months ago, I had a, a gentleman flying that's doing a 54 horse resort in Cancun, right on the ocean. And that was the first word. He's like, I've got rock 12 inches below my pure sand that has no nutrients in it whatsoever. Basically building it with beach sand. How do we fix that? Um, and, and working with Phil Mickelson's group out in the desert and, and how do we reduce our water and nutrient and nutrients and fertility and hold our, hold the nutrients there longer for what we're using and actively growing. What's our challenges in doing that? Well, when you start messing with carbon incorporating back into the soil where it is not, uh, it opens up a huge window on opportunity for us in the areas that we've never even been able to build golf courses or we, we spend $1.2 million on water. Uh, well, if we can reduce that 1.2 million by 80% per golf course, then you start looking at savings that, you know, the Miramichi is way more cost effective than what we're going to spend on water. You know, looking at PGA West, do that times nine golf courses. You know, the, the expenditures are astronomical when it comes into the ways that we're having to manage golf courses now just because we're buying water, which we never thought about buying. So the entire goal for us at Broken Sound now is, is my challenge of how much can I literally decrease fertility, fungicide applications, water, and managing the turf as a healthier turf and still providing the same playability per golf course. And Miramichi has been a huge impact on what I've done here at Broken Sound, including with my general manager who sat down with Russ. Uh, many times we've gone over it, we're, we're fifth in the country to be geo certified, first to be ever recertified. Um, we won the 2016 ELGA award, Ron Witten with Golf Digest, sat in my office talking about carbon for two to three hours. They're getting ready to do a whole write up on, on what we're doing here just with carbon. So, you know, from where I sit looking down is if we just started touching the surfaces, which we're all looking for the difference in technology and computers and irrigation systems. <laughs> and this seems to be, or this is for me, the biggest jump in technology that we can do with managing our soil profile. <laughs> um, for me, that's probably the, the majority of what I've got to say if I have any questions. Tell them. Rick, <clears throat> can you hear me, Sam? I can. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to maybe, if anybody has any questions, sorry about the technical difficulties, um, mm -hmm. but I'm going to pass them on to you. Um, do you might have any questions for Shannon? Yeah. Is there another method besides dry jacking that you think would get this turf? Is there another method besides, did you hear that, besides dry jacking and get it into the turf? Yes, uh, before, before we started playing with the dry jacked, we actually were top dressing. I had the 95.5 uh, sanded blend. It's, it was dried so that we could put it out. We put it out dry and we did it two ways. We were top dressing with it every three weeks at a light rate with uh, hand spreaders like we normally would do with dried sand. We incorporated it that way. And then we also incorporated it with the bigger particle sizes. When we shut down to airify, we went in, we airified, we drop spread, the carbon into the holes and then sand top dressed over the top. Uh, that's how we did it for the first couple of years until we played with the dry jack technology. Same, same grass thing on the old course as the new course? Or same, same, same pipe? Is there the same grass on the old course as there is in the new course? No, uh, the old course is Tiff Eagle Greens with the Celebration, wall to wall everywhere else, past Palantese, and the new course is Latitude 36 and Sunday Ultra Dwarf. 